A new report from the UK says that your waist should be half of your height. So for instance, I have a waist that's 36 inches and I'm six foot two. So although I'm, I think I might be shrinking, but I'm about 73 to 74 inches tall. So your waist should be half uh, the length of your, the, the waist circumference should be half of your height. This is out because BMI doesn't do that great of a job. I've discussed this with my brother on podcasts before and all over the place. It's an approximate measure of what's called your visceral fat or your abdominal obesity. And your abdominal obesity increases your risk at all sorts of things. Cardiovascular disease being kind of one of the end results, but increases hypertension, dyslipidemia, and type 2 diabetes, insulin resistance, and that type of thing. So I just wanted to show you real quick. Here's the article. There's a bunch of articles. In fact, ironically, right before I started doing this, I, I was asked for a quote by a magazine on this topic because there's a lot of people talking about this, even though I'm in the United States and this is over in the UK. Uh, a few people have sent this to me. Uh, one of my good friends who's over uh, yonder uh, sent this to me and asked me my thoughts. And now I'm getting asked to do quotes on it. So the, the gist is, is that we need to f somehow approximate our... Um, our visceral fat, and that's the stuff that increases our risk. I just wanted to show you real quick. So there are multiple proxies for this. Um, most of us in the clinic, like in an obesity uh, specialty clinic, we use just straight up waist circumference cutoffs. I was going to show you real quick here. I'm going to link to my podcast with my brother where we talk about the diagnosis of obesity because before it used to just be BMI, and that's kind of the gist here. The, uh, the, the UK, they want to get a little bit more... I don't know, say precise, a little bit more intricate into obesity as opposed to straight up BMI. Now, just to mention, once you get over a BMI of 35, eh, we don't have to throw it out the door, the whole waist circumference thing, but your risk is higher regardless. So it's really in between this kind of overweight to, uh, which is 25 BMI up to 30. Um, 30 to 35 is uh, class one uh, obesity, 35 to just below 40 is class two and over 40 and above is uh, class three, what used to be called morbid obesity. In between that 25 to 35 uh, BMI, there's this question of like, hey, are these people healthy or the, are these people gonna develop uh, risks? Well, you can get a little bit more precise with that risk by measuring a waist circumference. And so uh, here are some of those cutoffs. I just wanted to point them out. Um, in the United States, we use 40 inches for men and 35 for women. But if we're gonna get a little bit more, a little bit, probably better cutoffs, we should probably go to this 94 centimeters, which is around 37 inches and, and then 80 centimeters for women. If you can notice here that uh, some of the more Asian populations, their cutoffs are lower. And we discussed this in the podcast, uh, their threshold for having excess fat uh, is lower because that's where they start seeing those diseases a little bit earlier. So. Um, Got to get a little bit leaner if you're in the Asian population, unfortunately. So we, we do straight up waist circumference, but you can do uh, waist to height ratio. I just pulled up a few studies here. There's different ways of, of measuring this. And, you know, honestly, I don't know which one's better. I think they should probably start pitting these all together. You can also look at a waist to, um, waist to hip ratio. Here's, here's one that looks at waist to hip ratio and, and risk of cardiovascular disease. And even looking at uh, genetics and all sorts of different things here uh, shows that you do have an increased risk uh, when you have genetic predisposition for this increased uh, waist to hip ratio. I will say also that when you have weight around your hips and your legs, that might actually be protective of cardiovascular disease and some of these metabolic uh, sequela from having excess weight. So um, uh, women, you know, I have a lot of women that come to me that say, hey, I've, my legs are, are, are bigger and my, my hips are bigger and, you know, my weight's up a little bit, but they're very thin in the waist. And uh, their, their markers for metabolic disease are minimal to none. So um, I just want to throw that out there. So all this is is just a proxy for this abdominal fat. I show another thing here, adiposopathy. My friend Harold Bays, an endocrinologist who's also a lipid guy like me, uh, came, I think he coined this term, but um, this is a little bit of a stigmatizing image. I think you're supposed to really now have, you know, 
not cut off the, the face of people in, in these pictures. But it doesn't matter. You can kind of see here that, um, yes, increased energy balance leads to weight gain and a predisposition to carrying around the weight around your waist. It, it's, an, it's an endocrine organ, has endocrine signals, adipokines that are going out and doing all sorts of immunological and uh, uh, endocrine type of things here. So you can see reactive oxygen species, stress, um, all sorts of different signals here. There's actually a, a new uh, New England Journal uh, review out. I, I pull it up right here, but reassessing human adipose tissue. If you really want to nerd out, you can go here, but you can see here, there's, I just wanted to show this example. They show uh, some examples of those with more visceral fat uh, versus subcutaneous fat. Subcutaneous is the stuff you can pinch. Visceral is the stuff underneath that's kind of surrounding organs. And you know, it's interesting. I get in these, not debates, uh, discussions with some really smart researchers online on Twitter and I call it me mechanistic masturbation, where it's like, oh, well, is it the actual visceral fat that's secreting these hormones, or is it the proximity to the liver? And because of the way the fat is, it just starts circulating the fatty acids a little bit more, and these fatty acids get in the organs, and that's what's causing the issue. At the end of the day, it's really interesting, all these different mechanisms, and I think you know we can speculate and do more uh, studies to figure it out. But at the end of the day, we just want to uh, improve this abdominal obesity because we know improving that abdominal obesity decreases our risk of dyslipidemia, uh, high blood sugars, hypertension, and then decreases our risk of then the further things that we care about, cardiovascular disease, having heart attacks, having strokes, and that type of thing. Uh, the same principles apply. There will be people that struggle with weight loss. And this is what some of these people are complaining uh, about the, the NHS. It's like, oh, this is just another way to stigmatize and whatever. It's like, no, I mean, I think it's just, to me, we can look at the bright side. It's like, look, if you have excess weight, you're in that 30 to 34, 35 BMI. Um, and, and you're struggling with weight loss in general. There are things you can do to reduce your abdominal obesity, such as exercise. I have patients who are in my LiftRx group who are, I mean, tons of patients have done this. They start exercising and their scale weight doesn't change that much, but they notice their waist circumference changes by a few inches. That can be the difference, and we see this, that can be the difference uh, between developing type 2 diabetes or hypertension or resolving it even without much change on the scale. So I think if we look at just BMI, we're missing the full picture. If we add in some of these markers, whether it's just a waist circumference or if you want to do a waist to height or a waist to hip ratio, I don't really care. It doesn't really matter. I'm not sure if any one marker is better than the other. I think waist to height is probably easier than waist to hip, just to, to how you're measuring your hips can sometimes be hard. Um, find ways to reduce that abdominal weight, whether you're changing the, the, the scale, you're improving your dietary patterns. Uh, I have my, I, I'm going to shill out my little, I have a little start here guide. I'll put the link in there. I just I talk about all the little things you can start doing. Uh, it's a free guide if you want to check it out. But I, I think it's a good idea to get a little bit more precise into our risk and not just go by BMI. My BMI is like 28, and but my waist to, to uh, a height ratio, it's less than the 0.5 is what the recommendations are. In that 0.4 to point or 4.9 or a 0.49 uh, is, is the recommendation. Once you start getting to 0.5 and above, that's where the risk really starts happening. You can also use, again, like I said, my, uh, this, this isn't mine. I wish I came up with this. The waste recovery, they, they do these, they do the studies and kind of figure out who's at risk and who's not based on, on big, large, uh, cohort trials, uh, studies. So anyway, if you see this report, waist to height ratio. Now you know exactly what it means, abdominal obesity, what to do about it, and what the risks are. Hope this helps. Make sure you subscribe, tell your friends. See you next time.